Welcome, apprentices and acolytes, to unlock the knowledge. And today, we're gonna talk about what the hell is going on with Thrawn, baby. Ready up. Ready up. My destiny. Welcome, apprentices and acolytes, and I guarantee you, you don't need a star map or a wayfinder to find the Dark Temple because it doesn't matter who you are, apprentices and acolytes, you're coming into the Dark Temple. Visited by Mera Jade, Luke Skywalker, and Kyle Katarn, and so many other Force Sensitives like yourself. I am Lord Dagavir, and today it is time to unlock the knowledge. That's right, fam. And we are getting so much, so much knowledge, so much. And you know, outside, okay, first off, I gotta say, there's a lot of people that are talking about episode six is better than episode five. Oh my God, it's the best episode you have ever. Ah, I don't know about that one, Chief. You know, just because like, I, this is super biased coming, all right? I'm an Anakin Skywalker fan, Stan, man. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, okay? All right, but Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader, Ben Solo, like those are my faves, okay? And I, and I love Mando, man. I love Ahsoka, and I love Thrawn. You know, I love Doctor Aphra. I love all these characters, okay? All right, and your boy Revan. Oh, I, I just hope we see Revan one day. All right, but I'm telling you right now, I don't think anything, anything, could have been better than what we saw in Episode Five. And there's people out there that have the gall to to take people's reactions. You know, and it's so crazy because these people are like, you know, they're haters, all right? They, they, they drink in the haterade 24-7, bro. They, they got it in there, you know, and then they're just drinking it every single day. And they're, and they're taking reactions of even people that react to it that are known for not liking Disney Star Wars. And they even take those people reactions and they start talking and, and harassing about them and talking about how they're Disney shills and they're just cl clapping walruses, you know, for anything that they throw us for nostalgia. And it doesn't make any sense to me because, like, wasn't that the criticism in the sequel trilogy is that everything else was here and, and Disney ruined it? And now, like, we have Thrawn. We have Heir to the Empire. All We literally have a movie coming out that is called Heir to the Empire and and, and 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 they're still finding things to, to to be mad at, to be upset at, to hate on. I just, I don't think they're fans anymore, man. I don't think they, I'm not even sure if they ever were fans, you know? It, it's crazy to me. How could you complain about Anakin Skywalker and Ahsoka being nostalgia bait? Especially when the entire, the entire story of Star Wars is about Anakin Skywalker. He, he should be the most important character going forward no matter what no matter what anakin skywalker should be talked about heard about you know mentioned his force ghost should be guiding anyone and everyone so no one becomes him and that's what i love episode 5 for that's why i love ahsoka she could be the living embodiment of that and Anakin is just guiding everyone through the Force and beyond in the world between worlds and whatever else is out there. That, uh, you know, ethereal plane that we don't know much about in Star Wars. And I love that we got a little bit of that in Episode 5. And that's why I just feel like no matter what's going to happen, Episode 5 is just right now the peak. The, it is the peak of peak. You know, the only thing they could have done better is literally had Kenobi there. And then they would have dropped Anakin's Dark Deeds and Battle of Heroes and, and, and Duel of Fates. All right? I'm a big Pico, Pico guy, you know, so I, I really, you know, love those soundtracks. Man, I watch Revenge of the Sith, like, every day in sophomore and junior year of high school, okay? Leave me alone. <laughs> I know what I am, all right? But episode six was balling. Episode six was sick. I mean, we got to see Thrawn, man. And what the hell is up with these night troopers? What the flip? And what's even crazier is, all right, first, all right, we gotta, we gotta talk about this, Spartacus and Acolytes, all right, you gotta let me know, okay? You hit me up on Twitter, you hit me up on YouTube, you hit me up on the Discord, the Patreon, wherever we gotta go, and you tell me what you think about these Night Troopers, because is it possible, Spartacus and Acolytes, is it possible that these Night Troopers are all undead? That they are, like, that was the first thing I thought about that. I thought about the Night Troopers, and the reason why that makes me think that is because they have those red garbs, that red silk, that Night Sister Doth Mary, and silk around them, as if it's binding them, their souls, to inanimate objects. That's some Pokemon stuff. That's crazy. They are possessed by the spirits of beyond. And who knows what's capable out here because this is a new galaxy. These are the mothers of Dathomir. Okay? 
So I wonder how ancient their magic must be. They may even be more ancient than what we've seen Mother Tal's in and, and, you know, things like that. And what's even crazier is it looks like there's Zepho markings behind where Thrawn and Balin, Morgan Elsbeth are all standing. I just want to know more about this planet. I just want to know more about what's going on in this galaxy because you know me, I'm a big space guy, right? And I love the idea of going into another galaxy and the companion galaxies are so freaking sick and I just want to know more what is going on. What even happened? How do these people survive with Thrawn and, and Ezra in that battle on Lothal? And the Purgle just setting them out there. And it's so cool too because you absolutely see the destruction that the Chimera, it will always be the Chimera to me, okay? That the Chimera, Thrawn Star Destroyer, you know, you know, just kind of endured. And and you see when it's pulling up and it's this beautiful, gorgeous shot of the of the boosters. And the main two intergalactic, like, uh, hyperspace boosters are not working. And that, I think, is fantastic uh, environmental storytelling for Star Wars. Because that's a reason why Thrawn couldn't have broken the atmosphere, even. Or, or maybe he could have. But even if he got into space, he probably would have gotten nowhere with those boosters. He would have ran out of fuel. And I think that makes it even more interesting that that's probably going to be the thing, you know, that whole hyperspace ring is actually going to uh, attach itself to Thrawn's Chimera, his Star Destroyer, and that's how they're going to bring him into uh, the known galaxy, the, you know, the far, far away galaxy. So, uh, just amazing, amazing stuff. Oh, incredible world building, man. I love that. I love when Star Wars is new. You know, and there, don't 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 get me wrong. You know, we still have like the Dawn of the Jedi stuff. There's still so many things we don't know what's going to happen in the uh, you know in the new uh, Ray Skywalker movie. What's going to happen beyond there? But I've always loved the idea of things that predate the known Star Wars galaxy. And they even said that in this. Okay, they said the days, the the time before days were counted. Oh, say it again. The time before days were counted. That's, that, that predates everything, you know? That's, that's pre-Big Bang, right? I love that. That's pre-knowledge. And, and that's what's so beautiful, is because I love the idea of exploring these things. Because you're not exploring the origins of the Force, because I think that should be untouchable. No, you're, you're exploring things that, that are almost as old as the Force. You know, because when I think about Star Wars, I think about the Force was always there. Right? It's that consciousness that's always just been there, giving life to everything, right? Because it binds everything. So, what about, like, planets like Coruscant that we know are, like, some of the oldest planets in, in the known galaxy? You know, what about going in before Coruscant was even a city planet? You know? You know, we're caught in prime. Hut space. Huts. The huts are ancient, too. And then, of course, now you have the Dothmir and sisters, where she even said that the Dothmir and the Night Sisters used to not only ride Rancors, but now they used to ride Purgle? And so that makes you understand how, how important, how ancient this stuff is, right? And then you have this whole planet of Peridia. And Peridia is a wasteland of graveyards. And not just any graveyards, of Purgle graveyards. Well, I was, I saw that reaction. I was sitting there, I saw someone, no, sorry. I, I, I saw the episode and then I reacted and I was like, wow, what a beautiful planet. And then, oh, hey, the rings. Yeah, it's space bones and dust and carcass. What the flip? Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> that was crazy, man. That was the, in the most insane lore drop, I think. I don't, I don't think people understand how dark that is, like, that ring has literally seen ancient and ancient purgle. And, uh, yeah, someone's gotta get in there and carbon date that stuff, I can't even imagine how old that stuff is, man. That's, uh, wicked, wild, unfathomable, you know, how old that stuff is, and I just wanna know more. And, and the reason why I think it's also so compelling, because those who do not know Thrawn, they have no idea what they're in for. And while I love his depiction in this, I, I am also led astray. I am led astray because I have read a lot of these Thrawn books, you know? I've read a lot of the, the comics. And we know, as, you know, Expanded Universe fans that are, you know, that read into this, that delve into this, that Thrawn has two different depictions. And he is very evil, very villainous in live action and animation. But then when you bring him into the books and comics, it's a different type of Thrawn. And we are now getting the villainous Thrawn. And so I'm just, uh, I don't want to say worried or concerned, but I'm a little disappointed that 
Thrawn doesn't have that dual loyalty, and he just seems so very about the Empire. And I guess that's what's needed for live action. Uh, I don't know what's gonna happen. This is only the first episode. We only really have had like 10 minutes of him in screen time, and he looked amazing. You know, I, I, I do think that, uh, that live action Thrawn was always going to be a struggle just because that's the issue with, you know, the whole animation into live action. And there's so many people, including myself, that are big, huge Legends fans, and we want that carbon copy, right? of what we enjoyed, what we endured in the Expanded Universe to finally see in the live action. But then again, you have those people that are just going to hate no matter what because I don't even understand what they are, if they're fans or not, I don't know, whatever. But we have him, and he, I think he looks phenomenal. The only thing I would have said was was to probably, like, darken his blue, but uh, Star Wars animation had made him lighter, uh, and, I, I, and I, I that's the type of depiction I think that they're going with, you know? And I'm just really curious about how his story is going to end, because the biggest question is, what happens? What the flip happens? We have two more episodes, right? And there is a lot, a lot, a lot to understand how Thrawn becomes to his end. And then of course we have the movie, Heir to the Empire, that's gonna be coming out later. But the biggest question is what happens to Thrawn, and this incredible threat, galactic threat, because that what Thrawn is, he's a galactic threat. He is, in my opinion, more of a threat than the Emperor. And now we're going to see what's going to happen, but if this gets to as large as we think it is, well then, where is the mention of him in the sequel trilogy? Where is the mention of Thrawn in all of this? And there is a long time for things to just pan out and dissolve into nothingness as we see in The Force Awakens because the universe is kind of soft reset with the First Order. But the First Order does originate from the Outer Rim, uncharted space. And Thrawn very similarly is going to become around that same, uh, that same point of origin because now he's even further than them. He's outside the known galaxy. And, you know, there's a lot to put in perspective here, is what happens to the New Republic to the point Leia Organa creates the Resistance? You know, and in the Expanded Universe, we have that answer. It's just the, uh, you know, the anxiety and the, the unknowingness that something, a threat, is lingering out there. And that's what Leia has. And then when she investigates the Unknown Regions and Uncharted Space, they do find glimpses of the First Order and that a threat is growing. And that's eventually what happens and why Leia Organa creates the Resistance, you know? But I wonder if there was some alternate motivation. Maybe perhaps she found out about Thrawn and then that led her to investigate further. And then she discovered the First Order. So there are things where this can play into because that's what Star Wars is always going to be, whether people like it or not. It's going, it's always going to enhance the current storyline. And the current storyline, whether people like it or not, is the sequel trilogy. That's Disney's baby right now. And they're going to do their best to make it more valuable. And so, how do you do that? Well, everything that people likes, make sure that, you know, conjoins, that interacts. Those paths come along and join one another, and that's what the story is going to. Which, what makes me believe that the person or the entity talking to Balin potentially could be Snoke. And I really, really want it to be Abeloth, and I've always wanted Abeloth in the Star Wars Expanded Universe, in the Star Wars current canon, because I feel like that would be an awesome, amazing threat for Rey and Finn to fight later down the road. And I also love the idea of Palpatine putting Abeloth in her place and putting her, and trapping her here. Very similarly, how Palpatine cut off the Night Sisters in the Expanded Universe. Ah, oh, man, you know, and, and, and the courtship of Princess Leia. Amazing book. So you see the similar similarities here between these storylines, you know, and I think that's what is the best part about the Disney Star Wars is that we've seen both canons kind of absorb each other and, and use this, each other as, uh, as inspiration. You know, to build off each other. And I love that. A lot of people criticize that, but I love that. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's a whole thing. 
the books are there they're always they're always there George Lucas never really deemed these things as his canon and he was gonna overwrite these things anyway when his movies came out you know when whatever that eventually that was gonna be so you know I, I'm I'm not as aggravated or butthurt as everyone else you know and I enjoy it because now I get two of the things I love instead of just one and now Thrawn coming over here what is gonna happen with Balin I'm very worried about Balin dying and it's it's sad because Rip Ray you know and uh, these Star Wars stories are very compelling you know when you're watching them and they're not over yet because that's where I think Star Wars is actually the strongest is when you start to speculate about what's going to happen next and I think this is actually the best Star Wars has been you know since the force awakens man and yes we've had amazing stuff with Star Wars visions and uh, you know of course Ahsoka's doing this right now and the Mandalorian but I always feel like Star Wars is the best when people are speculating you know and the theories are going rampant and everyone's trying to figure out who what is what's going to happen who's this why is this where's this gonna end up and because that's interesting that's what people want to know that's Star Wars man and it's beautiful it's amazing and the force awakens only really ever gave us that because you know we already knew the ending with the prequel trilogy we knew that Anakin was gonna become Darth Vader and I love this original take this original uh, view of Star Wars where you know where we have these storylines going into places that we don't really know where they're going and I love that because that's where it is man it's the future that's where it is or so far in the past that you just don't know how things are gonna end and so here we are with Enoch and Thrawn oh my god I want to know about Enoch man when's that Funko Pop coming out I got a pre-order that <laughs> we got the uh, night troopers so cool and then and then what I think is also funny is just uh, how Sabine uh, <laughs> how Sabine just like doesn't tell Ezra at all about like hey uh, I may have betrayed Ahsoka and I willingly went with uh, these other two people you don't know about yet oh yeah and Thrawn's here and he knows your coordinates and yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> I just like I'm so I'm so flabbergasted by all that and I can't wait to see the conversation that's gonna happen in episode 7 uh, but also I have a suspicion that Ezra may be cut off from the force I think because of everything that happened and he witnessed it may have taken a toll on him uh, I'm very worried about our, our character here with Ezra. And, you know, he, he doesn't seem to be holding a new lightsaber. I'm very curious as to what are there, like what's happening with him. You know, because I do feel like uh, he sensed Sabine, and that's why you see them at the end. That's why you see her, uh, his, him at the end, like, just leaning up. So, I, you know, I, I'm just worried, that's all. I'm just worried. I don't think that's actually happening. I'm just worried that that's the case. You know, because there's a lot of questions, you know, why did Thrawn allow Ezra to live? You know, and is it because he thinks that he can turn Ezra? Is it because that he wants Ezra as an ally? You know, and, and that's more of Thrawn being expanded universe in book Thrawn rather than live action and animated version, you know? So I'm very curious to see what's going to happen here, and I can't wait, man. I mean, that's what I love. I love the excitement, the enticingness of the next episode. Let's go. And Ahsoka's been a straight banger. I don't care what anyone says. I, I, I love The Mandalorian. I love them. I love all seasons of Mandalorian. I think the third season was the weakest. Not, not bad. Okay, it was not bad. I, when I say weakest, it's just not as good as everything else that, that was presented before it. And I love the first two seasons of The Mandalorian so much. I think that and Star Wars Visions are like the best Star Wars creations outside The Force Awakens um, in the new canon, okay, in, in the new Disney era, all right? But Ahsoka, I don't know, man. I think Ahsoka just surpasses that right now, you know? If anything, it's neck and neck with like the first two seasons of The Mandalorian, but it's got Anakin Skywalker in it, so I just love that more, you know? And that's what's essentially pushing it over. Uh, Mandalorian season one and two in Star Wars Visions right now. It's just Anakin, and I got what I've always wanted since 2005 for Anakin. But Thrawn, man. Ooh! Sheesh! Can I get a sheesh? Please, man. You better say she's with me, dude. I just, there's so much going on, and I can't wait to see what's going on. Oh, but the questions. You got questions? I want to know your questions. What do you want answered? Okay? Because that's the thing. Why couldn't the Night Sisters see? Sabine read a part of this. They didn't know about Ahsoka Tano as well. 
Who's talking to Balin? What's going on with Ezra Bridger and why was he allowed to live? Oh man, and where is this all going to go? What is happening? I cannot wait, fam. But you know, no matter what happens, you can always come back and talk to me. And you know where you'll find me, fam. Inside the Dark Temple, visited by Mera Jade, Luke Skywalker, and Kyle Katarn, and so many of the Force Sensitives like yourself, I am Lord Dagavir, and I'll see you around, fam. Deuces.